This was seeded about May, around May 20th. And it's just starting to develop grain. And so there will be more forming up high here. What do we average here on height? The one plant here, 32 inches. That one's about 41. We don't care where it is. You're in. 40. So we don't really have anything higher than 41 inches here. Notice we got space in here. The germination rate wasn't the best here. But this, this was cultivated twice. And so lesson learned is it's got to be cultivated several times. I damage. I had spray drift on June 24th, 24D and milestone from over, over three quarters of a mile away. It did wipe out part of the crop on the side of the trees. And uh, so have to wait to see how that turns out. It, this crop can't have any chemical and neither can amaranth. And I do have some amaranth by the trees. It's about the same as what I got the other, other side, so I, I guess we'll just head to the one through the trees. I, the, what I contribute to the lack of spots here with plants is chemical drift. The day after, especially in this area, the leaves were curling and right now we got pigeon grass and I have no quinoa. And I do have pictures before the chemical drift and you could see the rows to where it was up. So this is what 2,4-D and, and milestone does to, to quinoa. We are at 63 inches. The highest we had in that field was 41. This was planted about June 10th. So we had a, over a two and a half week head start on, on that other field than this. This will mature earlier than the amaranth. The amaranth is like sunflowers, you need a killing frost. So this will be, when I grew it, uh, when I harvested it by hand, it was like middle, late September. Do you swath it or do it straight? Straight. Mm -hmm. so I, what I did notice when I did cut, for a while it'll hang on to the grain. Mm -hmm. And after a while it'll, it'll start shelling. It doesn't shell right away. And mm -hmm. amaranth will hold on to the grain for about a month. And then you can shake it and then get some loose. But even after killing frost, it'll still hold on to it, which is nice. The germination on this is really, really good. Part of this is seed I bought, part of this is seed from last year, of my own. And germination either way was good, but what I do notice in my own seed, which is the west half, we have plants with green leaves instead of this dark burgundy. Same and that's seed? that's a plant variation. Pardon? Same seed? Same seed. Wow. And, and the, what, last year, I had a this field up by the hangar. It had a plant here and there. Here's what I'm talking about is this. Half burgundy, half green, or some are totally green. We had a plant maybe one every 50 feet or 100 feet that had this. Now, on that part, there's a lot more. Not sure what it is, but I did notice my seed was smaller than what I bought. So hence I had to adjust the planter or, or get a, or redrill holes. What it asked me to do is to talk a little bit about the vigor of the plants. And each one is labeled with a, a red stick. And uh, they're planted at all the same time as was the tomatoes. But uh, the, the, the game changer here was the herbicide. Uh, I was told that herbicide doesn't affect the peppers is bad, but, but uh, tomatoes it's really bad on. And so uh, I have some surveys, if I can get any of you to fill them out. Uh, they're labeled. Um, we, we plant these for a variety of reasons. And you know, one of them is to see is how good do different varieties do in this part of the country. And it's not a one year deal, it's several years in a row. And there's other growers growing these same varieties, but in different order. So I was giving a, given a list of the order I got to plant each variety. This should be my biggest, most uh, vibrant tomato, and it's not. So that's what 2,4-D does. To the further west you go, the better they were. My border rolls for this were lark. Uh, I guess as the trial went, uh, everyone had trouble getting lark to germinate. And Cindy, what, yeah, that's the one you said. I, Cindy helped me. Yeah, they just wouldn't these. germinate. And I, I think I had nine. All the rest had none that I know of. And they sent out plants, so I made my border rolls to lark, but this way killed them here. I do have them on that end. I have a lot of green tomatoes. Um, I call these Chernobyl tomatoes because they're not healthy, but uh, that's a good name for them. There's some down there where they're brown underneath. 
And I don't know if that's a, a fungus yeah. or a blight or if it's if it's just a chemical drip. But I got each labeled. We have border to Moscovich. I assume it's a Russian variety. Way ahead, I had most of these die, and they sent out some replacement plants. And this one, the Rutgers, I can't blame the chemical drift on these. I had two that lived, and that's, as bigger goes, they're not bad. Weeds is a challenge, as with every crop. And so two weeks ago, the tomatoes were weed-free. They were just as weedless as the peppers, and this is what uh, two weeks has done.